Yoga, as we know that, uh, is the literally it means the union, union of mind and body, uh, and eventually to our spirit, which our soul. But we need to understand who we are, and that is known as identification. So, yoga actually helps us to release our identifications, which we have got through all the mind stuff. I would call it a mind stuff. Uh, what we have in our mind. So let's say we have imaginations, we have hopes, we have desires, we have conditionings, we have knowledge, um, we have um, all the uh, knowledge that we get from our formal or informal education, from our society and a lot of things we keep in our mind which actually defines our self, who we are essentially. So we need to release that conditioning and most important thing is the conditioning part because uh, we interact with the world the way we are. So we identify ourselves. Let's talk about identification in a very simple sense. For example, if what is your identity, what is my identity is something that I can start with my name, I can start with my parents, I can start with my surname as well, then my profession maybe my sex maybe my color maybe my mental aptitudes my gifts my talents my success my failures my experiences all these things essentially defines my identification with myself and this identification becomes so strong it just overpowers everything the true identity which we have is basically our true core our self our soul we can say but uh, it's more deeper than the concept of mind body and soul even if we have to consider that what we, how we are operating, we are operating through our mind and body. And mind and body is nothing but the biggest illusion and the identifications we have. I'm calling it identification as an illusion because if identification is not true, then it is false or it is illusionary uh, in relative sense. In true sense, no. Your name is very real. It is on your uh, uh, government IDs. It is on your uh, documents. Uh, it comes from your parents and it has it was formalized and it was given to you uh, to use it and that's how you relate yourself your uh, profession your history your past everything that you have been doing which goes in our subconscious mind which kind of forms our personality our personality is not something which is completely static we have been continuously modifying ourselves um, since we are born we have been influenced by external factors and something we have born intrinsically. We, we carried it um, from our past lives, which is known as the karmic impressions or the sanskaras or desires, uh, uh, basically. So we are a sum total of intrinsic and the extrinsic influences. Intrinsic influences are influenced by the external and how we interact with the external comes from internal. So it is continuous inflow and the outflow uh, aspects uh, which basically defines our personality so what we were 10 years back probably we are not the same person anymore still we are similar to what we were because there are a lot of things are still similar for example our face have changed probably we, we got more wrinkles we aged or more we got more gray hairs or uh, probably we have matured more or probably we have progressed or we have regressed based on how the uh, specific individual has 
allowed himself or herself uh, to progress to move ahead with the time of their lives so basically here the most important aspect of yoga is basically to reduce the gap between mind and body and this identification is one thing but if we identify ourselves if we identify ourselves in a false way where we think that the source of our happiness is our achievements is our achieve materialistic achievements or the materialistic objects that have been given to us to sustain but if we give too much importance to those external influences and the materialistic objects and the people around us then probably we would not be able to reduce this gap we would not be able to sort out what issues we are having what this gap is all about so yoga is basically a scientific method or a technique or a tool or um, a philosophy whatever you call choose to call doesn't matter as long as you allow the yo yoga the science with the hol holistic vedic science to reduce this gap between mind and body and allow it to merge so basically the uh, yoga philosophy uh, that we are studying here is is all about uh, understanding those uh, yoga sutras which which were designed and structured by patanjali as i said before uh, for um, our welfare and for our progress spiritual and material in every way but also to understand yoga in a right way so that we can apply it in our lives to change ourselves now why there is a need to change ourselves there is a need to change ourselves because we have moved out of the center right there is a center here and there are the extremes here so we are designed to live in the center in balance yoga is also about balance so it's a technique or the tools and methods to keep us in the center in the balance the very nature of this world is extreme the society where we live in actually pushes us to the two extremes at times the education the conditioning the mind is completely stuffed with this extreme knowledge and ways of living where we like to challenge ourselves where adventure challenge are so exciting words in this kind of conditioning and society it's very difficult for people to be in the center to be stress free to relaxed and enjoy the peaceful state of mind and the outcomes of the peaceful state of mind in which we are primarily interested so it is difficult but it is not impossible why because the ancient seers like patanjali and all these uh, uh, yoga seers and the prophets and the gurus which existed in last 1000 years or 700 years who have uh, uh, modified and amended these ancient knowledge for the contemporary man like us so that we can take the maximum advantage but are we taking the maximum advantage yes maybe maybe not depends on the particular individual how you choose to interact how you used to encounter yoga the yoga is a science but we can selectively pick things out of it right but if we try to learn yoga holistically holistic word is a very beautiful word which actually defines yoga perfectly holistic means wholesome wholesome means which has the uh, all inclusive kind of an approach that you have to do this you have to practice asanas you have to practice meditation you have to practice pranayamas uh, i should not use the word have to but if you choose to practice something holistically then probably you would practice everything which starts moving something inside you and you will experiment you will try you will learn and then you will stick to it which is a part of the practice so this identification has gone wrong we have given too much importance to becoming happy through materialistic achievements and objects and wealth what wealth can buy what money and what money can buy and and materialistic materialistic success um what kind of uh possessions we have so all these things have completely disconnected us from the true source of happiness so basically yoga is also about uh, a revelation a self revelation where we understand that these things are important earning money is important uh, doing job is important job is or work is basically a means to contribute to the people and society and also being paid for it because we have needs we have our family we have our own desires and we have to keep going we have to pay our bills and afford to eat food so all these things are important but we have given too much importance to it we have considered money wealth and materialistic possessions to be the absolute source of 
uh, self fulfillment and the happiness which is a false knowledge so yoga is also about to educate us a true education uh, comes when we experience something when we witness something when we realize something so yoga is a science which helps us to modify the identification and redefine us recondition us so that we can make a true connection to our true self which is our soul now when it comes to mind body and soul the most important aspect is you cannot understand anything if you don't have an experience right but because we don't have an experience so we have to use mind body right mind and body are nothing but instruments or the medium mind body is a medium mind is an instrument for example if you want to reach somewhere you have a car right so basically your car becomes your body is your body but what is your car is an instrument likewise your mind is subtle body is gross but both are interconnected right so we cannot see the mind but we can experience the mind the goal of practice as i said abhyasam is to reach towards the vairagyam which is the detachment before understanding vairagyam or detachment or desirelessness we need to understand what is desire and what is attachment see uh, as i said that we are we having 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 desires because we are always having desires we died with the desire in the last birth whether you believe on incarnation or reincarnation or not that's our personal choice but one thing is for sure that we are not uh, just a product of one birth hmm? because even if we go back when we were born when we were small babies we were still complex we were simple as compared to the adults but we were still complex even the children even the um, babies who have experience of being parents they can understand that children are also very creative children also have desires it just they cannot communicate because they are not uh, um uh, become experts in vernacular uh, skills and their language is not there their vocabulary is not there diction is missing so basically when we start communicating we can express ourselves doesn't mean that children or babies or small infants doesn't have those desires it means that they have been carrying something from their past lives we have been carrying something from our past journey this is a, a non stop journey but even if you consider one life as one journey or one milestone then also you can call it as a past journey and now we are uh, continuously moving ahead in that journey till the time we achieve samadhi salvation or moksha when this individual soul or the jivatma would merge with the parmatma or the super soul you can call it god almighty universe cosmos whatever so we have desires and it is very fundamental we have to accept it we cannot be in a denial mode the reason we have desires because even the divine has the desires desires are important because we have to sustain our life procreation is not possible if we don't have sexual or sensual desire procreation reproduction is not possible it is important for the proliferation and sustenance and the continuation of the species animals humans we are basically spiritual animals we are mammals biologically we are animals so that is one thing then food is a desire because we have to sustain we have to survive and food gives energy and the prana hmm? how many people can live without food up to a certain period you can live after that you cannot live hmm? let's not talk about those enlightened yogis who can live without food i mean how many are of them maybe we don't know but we are not there so we have to eat food we have our connection with food is very strong because food is fundamental for our survival our connection with drinking water or drinking fluids is there because our connection is there because it's fundamental to our survival and existence likewise the uh, desire to hug and kiss and you know desire to touch and express love is there because we have a fundamental desire to love and to be loved hmm? we like intimacy because intimacy is a medium of loving someone showing and expressing love all these desires are there sex is a desire very strong desire uh there's no problem with the desire 
people have issues with a desire they when they enter into the path of yoga and sometimes they start misunderstanding that i have to stop my desires i have to stop eating this i have to stop doing this i have to become a celibate i have to become a monk or go here stop traveling stop wearing these kind of clothes stop having these flashy gadgets no it's not like that we need to understand materialism from the light of uh, uh, from the prism of spiritualism we cannot understand spiritualism from the pr pr prism of materialism but vice versa is possible we can understand materialism through spiritualism because spiritualism includes materialism however we have to balance it out so Namaste friends and viewers a very warm welcome to a new discourse in the yoga philosophy course i hope you all are doing good and taking a very good care of yourself so today's uh, topic is uh, dharana you we must have uh, heard about the dharana a lot being a student of yoga if you have been practicing yoga in a structured way with your teachers then you must have heard about this term dharana today i'm going to uh, go into it and explain you in a proper way what is dharana so that you can not only understand but also practice because understanding precedes your practice if you don't understand something properly then the chances are that you might not be able to practice practice it correctly and as i always tell to my students that yoga is a very structured science with elaborate techniques methods and tools uh, i would say precise techniques methods and tools it is not random so understanding dharana it is actually known as dharan in english lot of people say dharana which is known as concentration that's a layman's term concentration lot of people uh, do not even understand what is concentration as we use it um, very casually in our uh, english language uh, that concentrate well on a particular task you must have heard your parents must have been using this term to discipline you while you studies or any task that even uh, it is considered to be one of the most uh, important mental faculty because concentration is directly uh, equivalent to the amount or the quality of your output uh, in terms of time as well so how quickly you complete task uh, any task effectively and efficiently depends on your concentration level so of course we should try to uh, gain concentration and yoga only helps us to excel and succeed uh, better so dharana means actually to hold or bind something in a uh, simple uh, way you can also understand it as like to try to focus um, your mental faculties on one particular thing it could be particular thing or um, uh, it could be an object it could be task in hand uh, whatever you are doing through your senses right but um, i feel that uh, if we have to understand dharana we have to come out of this uh, casual definition of uh, dharana which is actually trying to concentrate your mind on one thing through your senses like your senses are uh, your vision your ears your uh, feelings of course through your touch and your smell and of course uh, your mental faculties when they are alert to your conscious mind so all these uh, sensual and the mental faculties helps us to uh, focus on particular thing right but the actual meaning of uh, dharana is uh, to withdraw your mind which started in the process of pratyahar where we actually try to withdraw our mind from the senses right so withdrawing the mind from the senses is pratyahar which is known as a, which is known as sense withdrawal now the process of uh, pratyahar was that senses were disconnected with the mind in a way the mind is disconnected with the senses so there is a process of internalization of the awareness starts happening where your senses get disconnected and now your mind cannot go outward so internalization of awareness is nothing but a, uh, a process of pratyahar which has been achieved to a level where you can actually disassociate your mind from the outer world uh, and with the senses by and large now the process of dharana starts after the pratyahar where complete process in which mind is taken right to the different states of internal external and intermediate experiences so uh, yoga sutras uh, talk about samadhi is like a state where just the object appears 
without the presence of an individual consciousness so the keyword without the consciousness is very important uh, let me tell you that we are conscious beings and um, our consciousness plays a huge part through which we experience world through our mind uh, by the gateways of senses so whether it is um, acquiring knowledge is concerned or imparting knowledge like what i am giving right now um, or it could be uh, any kind of um, sense modality or the mental faculty it is not possible without the conscious mind so consciousness is a very very um, integral part of our existence and it is given to us by the god or the divine for a reason so that we can uh, fulfill um, our karmas and the four prime purposes which are dharm arth kaam and moksha and eventually we go towards salvation or the nirvana or the merging with the divine which is also the uh, highest goal of yoga now uh, object is not something physical why i'm talking about object here because we are talking about uh, uh, a state where only object appears so uh, it is very important to understand that what object is here for example uh, a lot of people when they reach at a certain stage in their uh, yoga sadhana or the spiritual practices then they have different experiences based on their their level of their consciousness which has evolved over the period of time some people feel that they are extremely connected to the object uh, go back to my uh, discourse in the dharana where uh, the object is there uh, the awareness of the object is very strong but this object is not in the in terms of physical sense at the stage of samadhi it might be at a physical sense uh, before you reach to this stage or even at the last stage of dhyan but once you cross the last stage of dhyan it means you have gone beyond the uh, the highest uh, uh, or the deepest i should say the uh, stages of meditation or the dhyan then you have reached where the individual consciousness is missing but object is still there however the object is not physical so you can say that object could be your aim object could be the uh, image of your god it could be uh, some sound it could be uh, some spectacular visions psychic visions it could be anything however you are not targeting an object here your goal is not to target an object so when the aim or the object of meditation is realized without the involvement of the personal consciousness that is known as a state of samadhi Oh